So newborn babies cry on an average of 133 minutes per day. And uh, like I said before, crying is an essential behavior to communicate what the newborn needs to the mother. It is, however, a very poor signal of what exactly the baby needs. So the current concepts in infantile colic are really important because they affect how the mother deals with the colicky baby, not only the mother, but the father and the other caregivers, how they interact with the baby. And finally, as it presents to the pediatrician, this is the first time that they would be visiting a healthcare center and how we interact and how we make them comfortable would affect the entire way in which the mother, the caregiver and the infant perceive the future healthcare. The brief outline of today, we'll be differentiating a normal cry from a colicky cry and we'll recollect what we know about colic. We'll look at the incidence, the age distribution. Is there any uh, relation between breastfeeding and colic and the etiology? Are there any sequelae? Look at the differentials, investigations and go on to the non-pharmacological management, whether herbal remedies are beneficial or are they harmful? Is there any role of probiotics? We'd be looking at this today. So what is a normal cry? From a meta-analysis of 28 studies of almost 8,000 infants, they found that newborn babies cry more for the first three months. And the mean duration of cry is 133 minutes per day during the first six weeks. And later, it comes down to around 68 minutes. So colic is a behavioral syndrome of excessive paroxysmal crying. Here the emphasis is on the word paroxysmal because there is a clear start and a clear end to this cry of a colicky baby. So normally the other babies, normal babies, they cry whenever and when, whenever they want. But colicky babies, they have a definite time of the day where they behave like this. And what we currently know about colic. So the definition of colic is when a previously normal infant starts crying and that cry lasts for more than three hours a day and it is present for more than three days a week and it should be present for a minimum of three weeks at least. So this is the new Rome 4 criteria and it defines colic. So if you look at the incidence of colic, uh, pediatricians report that almost eight to, it's a huge range of eight to 40%. But when we strictly follow the rule of the thirds, we find that only 35% of infants at any point of their life are suffering from colic. So this is almost one out of three infants having colic at some point in their life. And if you look at the age distribution, right from 1962, Brazil et al. has studied colic. And these 40 years of sleep study have told that colicky babies cry mostly during the first six weeks. And the peak, occur, peak incidence is at six weeks of age. And if you see the timing of the cry, the colicky babies cry more from 6 p.m. to 12 a.m. So this is the time usually when the pediatrician finishes his OP and he wants to go to bed or he has already gone to his home and he gets a call saying there's a crying baby there and you have to go to the emergency or to the OP and see what is happening. So the baby would have been crying right from 6 p.m. But only when the father's sleep is affected at 10, 11 or around that time frame, they will bring running, the baby would come to you. And uh, let us see if there is any relation between breastfeeding and colic. Breastfeeding, we all know, is best for the baby. However, there is a study that found that breastfed infants cry more and sleep less. But like how we saw, not all cry is colic. Probably this cry is because of more hunger and fussiness rather than typical colic. They also found that in bottle-fed babies, the intensity of colic is more, almost 43% more on formula-fed babies. And also in bottle-fed babies, colic incidence occurs earlier, that is at two weeks rather than the usual six weeks. If you look at the etiology, the word colic is derived from the Greek word colikos, which means colon. So most of the proposed etiologies have to do something with the large intestine and the GIT. One proposed theory is that aerophagia, that is the faulty feeding by the mother, will make the baby take in air. And this air, it causes some discomfort to the baby and the baby is crying. The other proposed etiologies are lactose intolerance, dysbiosis or altered gut flora, immaturity of the entric nervous system, increased motilin receptors, and finally, house milk allergy might also have a role in colic. And if you look at the psychosocial elements to colic, we divide it into issues with the mother, the baby, and the environment. When you look at the mother, the diet of the mother can cause some discomfort to the baby, and a lot of studies are dealing with this. And if you look at the baby point of view, the temperament of the baby, that is 
each one of us would be different in our out mind outset some of us would be jolly some of us would be serious so this temperament of the baby is likely to play a role in the colic and also the family's situation and uh, how they react together as a unit and depression of the mother early in pregnancy has been found to have been associated with colic and the depression also in the father this also is supposed to cause colic in the babies one thing we don't see in our country is smoking by the mother if the mother is smoking during pregnancy or even if she wants to quit smoking and she is using a nicotine patch it can cause colic in the baby however smoking in the father has not been associated with colic so this is a normal breastfeeding baby proper latch is key for everything and if there is any difficulty in the baby attaching to the breast if the mouth of the baby is not wide enough to take in the complete areola inside or if the tongue does not compress the nipple against the hard palate there is a chance that air can enter into the git and this air can cause gassiness in the baby and lead to colic and one thing we remember is also there is a difference between four milk and high milk we all know that so if in an infant who is often crying the mother will keep on feeding that baby so this lactose rich four milk when it is going into the large colon there is a possibility that it does not digest and it ferments releasing gas and can cause colic i already mentioned that the diet in the mother can have a role the commonly affected dietary allergens are nuts seafood dairy and wheat and if you suspect that a particular food in the babe mother is causing colic in the baby you can stop that particular diet for two weeks and you can see if the symptoms resolve and we'll go to the next part that is the gut microbiome so when a baby is born by a normal vaginal delivery the baby is getting uh, the normal probiotics from the vaginal wall of the mother and these will in turn inhabit the gut of the baby the other way is that the baby swallows the bacteria from the mother's nipples and these will colonize the baby's dit of special interest is the lactobacilli and bifidobacteria which are called as probiotics and these play a very important role in the microbiome of the baby so these microbiota will colonize the gut epithelium other to the gut villi and it will prevent the harmful pathogens from attacking the gi walls and this helps the baby from prevents it from lot of diseases they found devir katol did a study a longitudinal study that found that in the stool samples of babies who have colic there is a very slowly development of the microbiota especially the harmful bacteria like proteobacteria and klebsiella are increased in the stool samples of colicky babies whereas healthy bacteria like uh, bifidobacteria and lactobacilli are reduced in the colicky babies stool samples and they also found that when they tested this stool sample of colicky babies the fecal calprotectin level is almost twice as that of a normal infant so fecal calprotectin is taken as a surrogate marker of gut inflammation and this gut inflammation can affect the fecal osmolarity the ph and the luminal nutrients thereby affecting the entire microbiome how can we measure crying so it is a very subjective thing crying so usually the mother is given a diary like a baby day diary or the aims cry score and normal questionnaires are available online like the rome 4 pediatric questionnaire which the mother can fill and she can bring it during review so these are columns where the time is shaded and when the baby is sleeping when the baby is awake etc and the mother will shade the appropriate timing and she will bring it to you and you can know how long the baby is crying when you go to the history a particularly important one is the criteria of colic should be satisfied the timing that is in the evening hours and the age any newborn baby with crying should not be labeled as colic so usually it is around after 6 weeks of age and we have to ask about the infant feeding stooling and urination to see if the baby is not hungry and crying and the sleeping patterns can be assessed and you make the baby interact with the mother and check that and an important history is a negative history of fall a fever or a seizure or a vaccination which can be a reason for the crying and not colic and when you plot the growth chart you will find that these babies are usually large they are have accelerated growth because the mother keeps on feeding the baby as she is crying and a baby with failure to thrive and colic does not happen there is some other organic cause for the crying so a typical cry is paroxysmal like i already said and there is a difference in the tone of the cry it is high pitch and the mother says it is irritating and really painful for her and there will be hypotonia with facial flushing and the baby will have difficulty consoling so whatever you do you cannot prevent the baby from crying and whatever you do you cannot stop the baby from crying either on examination we have to specially assess the hydration and subcutaneous fat to rule out that the baby is not hungry and the baby is well fed 
then we can assess for any tongue tie which might interfere with feeding in a baby and a head to toe in, in head to toe examination to rule out the common differentials so colic is a diagnosis of exclusion and only after we satisfy all the other we have ruled out everything we will come to a diagnosis of colic the common differentials would be reflex gastroesophageal reflex a corneal abrasion which can be checked with a fluorescent staining of the cornea a hair tourniquet usually the hair from the mother's hair can be tied around a, a, a finger and it can cause incessant cry if in a may baby you have to rule out torsion of testis big hernias meningitis which is a reason for high pitched cry intersusception ear infections and urinary tract infections this is the number one lab investigation if at all you have to do please do a urine routine and a urine culture to rule out uti in a crying infant any diaper rash any oral ulcers and finally any history of fall that can cause a fracture in the baby and child abuse here we can see the typical burnt mark of a cigarette so child abuse should also be ruled out lab tests have limited role if any if you suspect lactose intolerance you can do a stool reducing substance test and for cow's milk protein allergy you can do a knuckle blood test fecal cal protecting is a research tool and reflex studies if you suspect grb colic does not have major long term benefit effects it is self limiting and it is benign however there are studies that say there is an increased susceptibility to recurrent abdominal pain eating disorders later in life they also have a positive influence on migraine without aura these babies can have migraine later in life and the effects of colic on family functioning are present early but they stop after 3 years there were studies that said that colic is uh, is uh, colic is associated with atopy eczema allergy etc but these studies have been refuted now and uh, temper tantrums are found to occur in babies with colic at the age of 5 years so commonly we would see babies like this behaving in the shopping mall when you don't buy them anything so a temper tantrum is an unpleasant disruptive behavior in response to an unmet need when the child does not get a chocolate or a toy he starts crying so colicky babies have temper tantrums later in life and the sleep pattern is affected in colicky babies they have a shorter sleep time they we wake up easier and arousals are also more in colicky babies and if you do a sleep study you will find that the babies with colic had obstructive apneas during rem sleep at 2 months of age and it is very stressful for the parents rather than for the baby it can be a cause for postpartum depression in the mother the mother can stop breastfeeding thinking that something is wrong with her breast milk she can have guilt exhaustion anger etc and it can also lead to shaken baby where the mother is frustrated and she shakes the baby to stop it from crying this can cause hemorrhages in the brain and the mother should be counseled so she does not resort to such techniques the non pharmacological management remember the 5 years technique swaddling that is wrapping the baby like a package and you should teach it to the second caregiver not the mother because the mother is already stressed she cannot handle much so you can ask the grandparent or the father to do this and the other ways are uh, making the baby sleep on the side or stomach making sh sounds sh and all that types gently swinging it back and forth and making the baby suckle on the breast or a pacifier and the other thing is teach the proper burping technique so that the baby's gas gets released massage has been tried with some success in the western world and even our parties do this uh, massage with oil and there are uh, things available that you can buy like a rocking chair for the uh, uh, for the parent who is uh, not able to comfort it it will take some time off the mother also acupuncture has been studied and there are studies which say that it is helpful but further research is needed we all know this ad we would have seen it as a kid enna aachu குழந்தை அழுகிறது உட்வர்ட்ஸ் கிரை போட்டர் கொடு நான் குழந்தையா இருக்கிறச்சு அதுதான் கொடுத்தேன் ஸோ திஸ் இஸ் தர்பல் ரெமடி விச் ஆல் ஆஃப் அஸ் யூஸ் வி உட் ஹவ் கம் அக்ராஸ் பிரிஸ்கிரிப்ஷன் பை அ சீனியர் ஆர் அ ஜூனியர் பீடியாட்ரிஷன் அண்ட் த உட்வர்ட்ஸ் கிரை போட்டர் இஸ் வெரி ஃபெமிலியர் டு மென் லைக் அஸ் பிகாஸ் இட் ரிசம்பிள்ஸ் அ வாட்டர் பாட்டில் ஏர்லியர் ஃபார்முலாஸ் ஹேட் ஆல்கஹால் வாட் இட் ஹேஸ் நவ் இஸ் நாட் ஆல்கஹால் பட் இட் ஹஸ் தில் ஆயில் அண்ட் சோடியம் பைகார்பனேட் தேர் ஆர் ஸ்டடிஸ் வித் சே தட் கிரை போட்டர் அட்மினிஸ்ட்ரேஷன் இஸ் நாட் அட் ஆல் பெனிஃபிஷியல் and it can cause vomiting constipation even colic itself it also has preservatives which are not given for the baby usually and bonisen is again a very common uh, drug which we come across in prescriptions this contains fennel seed oil there are studies which say that fennel seed oil emulsion is superior to placebo however this again contains preservatives and the latest therapy is available in amazon 
you might be wondering what it is it is called ura marund it is available as a package on amazon it has vasambu kadukai masikai sukku and manjal and it comes with this beautiful kal called the orakal this is the procedure in which the mother is supposed to make that she has to burn all the ingredients in velakanna then she will express a little bit of breast milk and grind that uh, thing on the breast milk and you get this beautiful viscous black dirty liquid which the mother will feed every time or the grandmother will feed every time during bath it supposedly helps in uh, digestion and once we know how it is made i definitely would uh, think none of us would recommend this so dicyclamine is one weapon in our arsenal it does have benefit it can cause smooth muscle relaxation however it is associated with lot of side effects like anticholinergic dry mouth symptoms etc it can cause a drugged dopey look in the baby and can cause apnea seizures and syncope so we generally do not advise this proton pump inhibitors none of the associations like the north indian or the european pediatric gastroenterology hepatology and nutrition society advise this until and unless grd is proven there is no role for ppi lactase no benefit thymethicone which is a very favorite drug of ours so supposedly what it does it causes the gas bubbles to coalesce and it releases the gas and expels it however two high quality studies done in 2016 found that these have no benefit in colic it is considered to be safe you can just give no harm in that remember one thing it can interact with levothyroxine and if the baby is supplemented with levothyroxine for congenital hypothyroidism this will increase uh, decrease the levels in blood so we have to remember this point alone and the latest in research is probiotics like lactobacillus reuteri which is found in every part of the human uh, being from the vagina to the human milk what is proposed is lactobacillus reuteri alters the gut microbiota it increases healthy bacteria counts and reduces harmful bacteria levels thereby reducing crying and there was a study done by savina et al who found that there were more beneficial bacteria and less harmful bacteria in babies stool samples who are given lactobacillus reuteri dsm 17938 lactobacillus reuteri does reduce crying time by almost 50 percentage and by 28 days of supplementation they found that crying from 4 hours per day dropped to 1 hour per day and this was continuing the benefit continued even after stopping that molecule but a systematic critic review finds that lactobacillus reuteri reduces crying only in breastfed babies and not in formula fed babies and there is a huge but inconsistent uh, variation and it appears to vary geographically probably because the microbiome of a mother from india would vary from that of usa so it is there are lot of limitations in these studies also they were done in a highly selective group and further research is needed to uh, clarify whether we can give for all colic babies other species that have been tried are lactobacillus rhamnosus which not only reduces crying and fecal calprotectin but the side effect is that it increases the total bacteria levels not only the healthy bacteria levels so if you suspect cow's milk allergy if the baby is breastfed exclusively take the mother counsel her and ask her to stop any suspected allergens in her diet if the baby is given a mixed diet you tell the mother she should only give breastfed and not give any other diet but if it is a formula fed baby you can take you can give extensively hydrolyzed formula such as alimentum nutramigen etc which are available online also and uh, these hydrolyzed formulas do have a role in cow's milk allergy soy based formulas they are never recommended for anybody less than 6 months of age so and again research from vanderplas et al says that fermented formula the lactose is fermented to glucose galactose and they add oligosaccharides like uh, prebiotics like the galacto oligosaccharides and fructose oligosaccharides they found that when they did this trial they found that colic was less in babies given this experimental formula and the crux of therapy is only counseling you can see the mother bringing the baby to you she is sad she is upset she is angry she is violent you sit and counsel her remember purple p u r p l e you tell the babe, mother that a baby will have a peak of crying so it will cry initially more for the first 6 weeks and gradually it will drop you tell that the cry will be unexpected you cannot stop it you cannot prevent it you cannot cure it you tell that the baby will resist soothing whatever they do the baby will continue crying but they do not worry you tell that the baby will have a pain like face but the baby does not real does not have real pain though it looks as if it is in pain it does not have real pain you tell that the baby's cry would be long lasting that is even 5 hours per day and you tell her that it is more in the evenings so this is normal colic you don't be sad you don't get frustrated give your baby to the second caregiver you take some time off 
you make sure that she is confident enough to deal a baby don't burden her with unnecessary things and at the end of the session the mother should go home like this happy and confident not only in herself but also in you and remember breastfeeding is the birth right of every newborn baby it should be given exclusively for the first 6 months of age there is no other uh, nothing that compares to it this liquid gold so summing up we saw that not all cry is colic we saw that we have to exclude the differentials before you label it as colic and then we saw we have to avoid herbals and other unnecessary medications probiotics are promising there is need for more research in this field and finally reassure 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 the mother make sure that she leaves your clinic happy thank you you said about 3 hours stay first 3 weeks or 3 days of a week then 3 weeks for fast continuous yes. for 3 weeks and it actually takes away by 3 to 6 weeks yes, uh, 3 6 months of life correct and mostly this is due to improper latchment correct which should be taught to the mother yes at the time of delivery which yes. is the most important preventive possibility 